Hey YouTube, Apple iDev here. Um, sorry for taking so long. I know it's been a couple of weeks since my last tutorials have come out. Um, this is really just because school and debate and everything has been really insane lately. Uh, so this week I'm going to try and uh, catch up. I'm going to try and get a two to three tutorials out on every single uh, series that I have running right now. I have learned Objective-C Programming 101 and this one, which is our just uh, Programming for the Mac tutorial. Um, and uh, I have a really exciting announcement. Um, in the last month, and I haven't even put up any new videos in two weeks, and yet in the last month I've reached 41 subscribers and over 1,400 video views. And this is really just fantastic. So I'd like to thank you guys for this support. Uh, it's been really amazing to just watch all of these results climb. Um, having said that, uh, we're going to close out of Chrome here, and we're going to get started. So the first thing that we're going to do, uh, what we're actually going to be doing today, is we're going to be adding some auxiliary functions to this uh, panel that we created actually in the first video. Um, and so what we're going to do here is, before we even add anything to this window, what we need to do is we need to create some classes to control this window, because uh, this app delegate is actually not what we're, what we're using to control this window, but when this window is brought up by uh, button 2, we want to be able to have... Um, we want to be able to have a separate class to control what we can do within this window that pops up. So in order to do that, we're going to hit Command N, and we're going to create a new Objective-C class, and we're just going to call it My Panel, and it, we want it to be a subclass of NS Panel, and we're going to hit Next, and we're just going to save it right in there. And you see we have our MyPanel.h and .m files, just like we expected to. And now what we want to do is we want to click on our panel here, and we are actually going to uh, come up here to My Panel, and we're going to select that. And you can see, uh, if we build it right now, the compiler should not have any problems with that. And it doesn't. That's excellent. So, now that we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to set it up. And what we're going to make this uh, panel do is we're going to set it up where it can, um, where you can input some text into a text box, and you can click a button, and uh, a label will display how many characters are in that string that you typed in. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is we're going to drag in a text field. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this out to a pretty good size. And, all right, it seems like a pretty good size. And we'll even make this a little bigger just for grins. Trackpad's been really acting up lately, and I'm not sure why. Um, all right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, what type of button should we do? Let's try a different type of button than our usual uh, push button. We'll do a rounded rectangle button. So this rounded rectangle button we'll just drop in here. And we'll drop it right at the bottom. We'll use our gu guides to align it. And we're just going to uh, call this button, and we'll just say count characters. And once we do that, we have to put in one more piece of, uh, or one more item here. And we're going to put in this label. And this label is going to be what ultimately displays uh, the number of characters. We can drag that, drag that down a bit. And to do that, we're going to uh, we're going to do a couple more things here. We're going to come into our properties. We're going to say we want it to uh, put our text in a centered manner. Um, we don't want it to scroll. We want it to wrap. And um, sure, we'll make the font size 14. And one more thing is, um, actually I believe that's all we have to do. All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're just going to drag this text field out and make it nice and big. This text, uh, this uh, label, I guess. And the placeholder text, actually we are gonna make that text a little smaller, sorry. There we go. So we're just going to say, uh, we're just going to have nothing in there at the start. So once we have nothing in there, what we're going to do is we're going to click on our assistant editor here, and we're going to hide that right toolbar, and we're actually going to hide our left toolbar to give us some more space here. Um, and now what we're going to do is into uh, my panel, into our uh, .h file, make sure it's on my panel .h. What we're going to do is we're going to just drag in all of these things so we can have properties and actions for everything that we want. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag in our text field. And you can see it knows that it's type ns text field, and we're just going to call this my text. And the next thing we want to do is we want to do the uh, button. And in the button, we're just going to call it, we're uh, actually first, 
we need to change this to an action. And we're just going to call the action uh, count. And then we need to uh, take the text or the uh, text here, and we're going to create an outlet for that. And we'll just call it result display. And we need to do one more thing. Uh, this is something that you don't need the assistant editor or the assistant editor for, so we can shut that out. And instead, we'll just go straight into my panel.h. And the last thing that we need to create is we need to create a string object, and I'll show you why once we get into uh, into uh, the next part here. But essentially, what we need to do is we're going to, to uh, we're going to uh, create a property for it, and we're going to say property ns string, uh, and we're just going to call it user. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to save that, make sure that we don't lose any of those uh, changes, and we're going to go into mypanel.n. In mypanel.n, you see it synthesized everything except one thing, and we need it to synthesize that string. So we're going to say at synthesize at synthesize, and we're going to say synthesize user semicolon to that. There we go. And um, what we want to do is, in order to uh, make sure that we're not editing the actual instance variable, but a copy of it, um, and that's really all you need to understand for now, is we're going to say underscore result display, and we're going to do the same thing for those. Um, this is essentially just to make sure you're not editing the original object, but rather you're, um, but rather you're editing the copy that's in the actual implementation file. It's sort of a weird concept. Just know that you should that that's just a good programming habit to have. And once we're in there, what we're going to do is we're just going to write a couple of lines of code that will show us what we need. That will tell the uh, that's going to tell the uh, program what to do when the user clicks the uh, count characters button. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take we're going to get the text that is in the um, that is in the actual text box. So we're going to say user equals bracket underscore uh, my text space uh, string value, and that will get the value of the text. And we're going to do a semicolon, and we're going to hit enter. Um, the next thing we're going, to need, we're going to do is we're going to create an integer. And for this, we're going to say ns integer. And we're going to say length equals bracket underscore user. Again, we're going to say length. Um, and again, we're doing this because uh, you can't actually, for, for some reason, the way that uh, this variable is stored, uh, the way that the length variable is stored, and the way the, what the user length returns, um, you can't store this in an int primitive. You have to store it in an ns integer object, um, and ultimately, it's just kind of easier. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to do the final line of code, which is going to display the actual uh, result in the text. So, for here, what we're going to do is we're going to say underscore result display dot string value equals bracket ns string string with format with format. And we're going to say at quote, because remember that's how you start off a string. And we're going to say actually backslash quote, which is going to print a quotation mark. Percent at, which will print the string. And we're going to do another backslash quote to do another quote. And we're going to say consists of percent d, which will print our integer object, characters. We'll do a period, a quote. We'll say comma underscore user, comma space length. And both of those will, uh, the, the user will actually, um, the user will actually print into the percent at, and the length, it's giving us an error. Let's see what this uh, error is. Oh, it's a long, so uh, this is something they changed in the uh, iOS 6 compiler, or in the 10.8 uh, compiler. Like I said, they downloaded the developer preview. Which means that uh, there's some a little different syntax. Don't worry about that. You guys are still just going to want to use percent %d. Um, basically, because of my compiler, I have to use percent %ld. But don't worry about that. Just use percent %d. It'll work fine. If it gives you an error, change it to percent %ld because I guess then they changed that in the old compilers too. But in any event, that is actually all the code we need. Uh, that's it. So we're just going to save it and we're going to run it. And. Sorry again, I haven't been doing too much work in 10.8, so I have to reset a couple of settings here. And anyway, uh, hopefully it'll compile, work wonderfully. And 
Skvělé. Why it isn't? It? Oh, there we go. No, well, so now, okay, so there we go. So you can see that uh, it works the way it used to. But now, when you hit tab and you uh, click on button two, you can see this window comes up, and we can type. This is a test. You count, and it tells you how many characters it consists of. And if we delete the period and click count again, it will update live. And um, you can see if we hit, uh, if we come back here and we click the button, it goes away, but you can see the cool thing is that it still maintained that state. It did not reset, so if you accidentally hit enter, you want to hit tab again and go back to this window, the window's still there. Uh, it still maintains everything you want. Um, the one catch is, because you're in here, you can't use those tab enter um, commands anymore, uh, because, again, those only work for this main window. Um, so once you leave that window, you cannot use those commands because they don't exist. Um, but that's a pretty simple tutorial. I'll probably put up another one. I haven't exactly figured out what we're going to add. So if you have any suggestions for what to add to this tutorial, uh, drop a comment. Uh, if you have any other ideas on what you'd like to learn in programming for the Mac, uh, or programming for the Mac, again, drop a comment and I'll add something in. Otherwise, uh, keep watching and enjoy. Thanks.